Hey folks, Matt from right of the image.com. I've got a question in here from Graham, and it's an interesting question. I've discussed it before, but we haven't really talked about it for a while. So I thought I, I read this and I thought that's a, that's a good question and uh, one we should talk about. Nikon 85 F18G or Nikon F14G is the 1.4G worth the additional cost? So that's the heading of the email, but you can in shooters or Sony or anybody else, we could just remove the brand here and say F18 versus F14 is the additional speed worth the additional cost because that really um, is what it comes down to in almost any situation I could think of. Most of the times, and especially with the Nikon F18, the 85 F18 and the F14, um, they're just as sharp, sometimes even sharper on the F18. Um, usually the uh, bokeh is just as good quality and it is in this situation. Same with the 50s. Um, and you're just really paying for the speed. So he says, uh, Hi Matt, love your channel. The reviews and your responses are brilliant. I'm a very keen photographer shooting mainly portraits and landscapes. I've recently purchased a Nikon D850, which I love, and still have my D7200, which I also love. Both are fantastic cameras. I'm looking for a good full-frame portrait lens. I use the Sigma 17-50 f2.8 on my D7200, and I'm now looking at a good portrait lens for my D850. I'm considering either the Nikon 85 f1.8G or the Nikon 85 f1.4G. Is the cost of the 1.4 g worth it since it's almost four times the price of the uh, 1.8G? I'm currently using the Nikon 24-120 to 20, uh, 24 to 120 F4 on the D850. I enjoy your reviews and thoughts, and, w and your thoughts would be much appreciated. And so that's Graham writing in. And thank you for your question, Graham. My, uh, I guess you can probably already see where I'm going with this, with uh, the introduction. Uh, F14 versus F18, is it worth the additional cost? Only if you need it. That's really the only answer that's valid here, especially in this specific example, although this would directly pertain to the 85 F18 from Canon and then getting into the more expensive ones. I think they even have their F12L at that point. Uh, and you're really paying for speed because the F18s are still very nice lenses, good quality, especially specifically in this Nikon situation. I love the F18G. And in this situation, no, I'd never have felt for myself that the F14G was worth the additional cost. Now, there's other people out there that would say, oh, no, 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 the F14, absolutely, I need that. And that's fine. I'm not negating that. For my situation, the F18 is all I need. I'm happy with that speed. It's just as sharp as just as nice bokeh. I just don't need to pay the extra for the speed. I mean, speed, fast lenses really are from the times when we had really slow film where you could barely get 800 ISO. Now we've got cameras like the 850 that can shoot at huge ISO levels. And you really don't, you know... All you're going to get is speed in the sense of a faster aperture so you can shoot in lower light situations. And that also gives you shallower depth of field. If the shallower depth of field is a big thing that's very pertinent to the way you shoot, or that extra speed because you're in very low light and you want to keep your ISOs lower even though these cameras are really capable, um, then that's why you would spend the extra money. Short of that, no, you just go with the 85 F18G. It's and a fantastic lens. I love it. I have it here. I shoot it on all the full frame bodies. So um, that's what I would say. Um, really like the 24 to 120 F4 VR, by the way, that you said you're shooting with the 850. It's a great lens. Um, so that's my thoughts. The um, I also really like the Sigma 17 to 50 f2.8 on your 7200. That's my number one choice for a, for a crop sensor body in either Canon or Nikon. So, um, and this this would hold true too with the 50s. I mean, I have a f1.4 D from Nikon, but I, I got it for less money than I it was, it was like virtually brand new. It was used, but I got it for less money than an f1.8 uh, G was worth. So that's the only reason I did buy that one. But normally, if I was just buying new and I was looking at the two, I would get the f1.8. Uh, on the 50s as well. Same with the Canons. The uh, 50 F18 is very nice. I would venture that when you're getting into some of the F12s in the Canon side, you are getting into a little bit better quality, both build quality and image quality. In the Nikon side with these two, not really. Uh, you're, you're getting just as nice a lens. You're just paying for the speed. Let me throw it back to you guys. Do you guys agree with me? You're just paying for the speed and then henceforth the ability to shoot in lower light and get a shallower depth of field? Or do you think there's other advantages? Or do you think, you know, let us know. Let us know what you think in the, in the comments below. F18 versus F14 in this specific situation, Nikon F85 F18G versus Nikon 85 F14G. Is it worth the additional cost? Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Thanks for your question, Graham. And stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.